Hey nature lovers, this is Kayla, and welcome to Nature Will Nurture. Now if you're visiting now, this is part two of the beginning of the seed starting for native plants and container growing. So if you're a renter like I am, um, this is a good way to bring insects to your your place outdoors um, without having to have long commit committed gardening. If you're into container gardening, this is a great way to bring insects and life into your outdoor space. So if you enjoy this, make sure to watch part one. Um, the video was a little too long, so I had to break it up into two parts because uh, sometimes I can talk too much. But if you enjoy this, please like and subscribe and comment below if this is something you enjoy watching um, or if you have other things that you want to see. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you at the end. All right, so this next group of plants, they only need 30 days to be in my refrigerator. Drew doesn't know this yet, but it'll just be a small bit, you know, I'll kind of put it in the back or something. So they only need to be in the fridge for 30 days. And what I'm gonna try doing, this is one of the packages from Strictly Medicinal Seeds. These are probably purchased by Drew. These came from Oregon. And like I said, I don't really know if these are gonna bloom at the right time, but I know he's had pretty good success with them over the past um, when we got these originally. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. What I'm talking about is Echinacea purpurea, which is the purple cone flower. And that not only is a native plant, but it's also a medicinal plant. So three birds with one stone because it also feeds the insects. Purple cone flower is visited by the tiger swallowtail butterfly, bumblebees, uh, the Banded Longhorn Beetle, and that is from the book. The next set of seeds I have is Butterfly Weed, which many people might be a bit more familiar with, with the monarch butterfly and everything, and that's Asclepius tuberosa, and obviously that is a larval host for the monarch butterfly, but it is also the larval host for the queen butterfly, milkweed tussock moth. It's visited by a large number of insects, butterflies, leafcutter bees, green swept bees, milkweed leaf beetles, paper wasps, ants, and soldier beetles. So there's soldier, be soldier beetles again. I had some success with this. I did try to, hopefully they survive the winter, but I did transplant them from our old place. Um, and those were the ones I, I started from seed. So I hope they survive the winter and transplant. And they're just a nice bright orange color. And then another one I'm probably going to include with the 60-day plants um, because I missed out on my opportunity, but I'm going to try anyways. And I was minorly successful with this without stratifying it. And that is Ohio Spiderwort or Tritoscantia, which might sound familiar if you're a houseplant lover. Tritoscantia ohiensis, so Ohio Spiderwort. And um, it's a little bit of an important plant to me because I'm from Ohio and Tritoscantia, that's a very common houseplant uh, in the houseplant world. So I, you know, it's a, it's a great marriage of the two. And that one uh, is visited by sweat bees, green sweat bees, mason bees, small carpenter bees, bumblebees, surfer flies, Eastern tiger swallowtail. And then last, the last group of plants are going to be either directly sown plants where you just pop them up outside or just start them in the soil directly come spring. I'm probably going to start them a little early. And uh, the other ones are also just start them straight from the pouch, you know, no cold stratifying. And so the first one I'm doing is wild bergamot. I forget what the other name, common name for it is, but it's Monarda fistulosa. And this is also a pretty big powerhouse, um, pollinator friendly plant and very easy to start from seed. I had a very good uh, result germination rate from these. So I'm excited to start them up. I think I was able to bring some over from the old house, but I'm container gardening now, so. And um, Minarda is 
the larval host for the hermit sphinx moth and snout moths. Um, it has a specialist bee, the black sweat bee. And then also it's visited by mason, the mason wasp bee flies, which I didn't even know that was a thing. Great black wasp, which are totally harmless. <laughs> we had them in our last house on occasion. They're scary, but they're super dumb. They just like fly into the windows. <laughs> they don't even see you, so don't be afraid of those. Soldier beetles, banded longhorn beetles, butterflies and moths, and bumblebees. The next one I had to get because as an allergy sufferer, the name of this plant resonates with me. It's called sneezeweed, and its scientific name is Helenium autumnale. I don't think I had much success starting it from seeds, so we'll see how that goes. So sneezeweed is the larval host for the dainty sulfur. I assume that's a, I think that's a butterfly. Um, it also is visited by birds, butterflies, and bees. And then last, in terms of native plants, I have partridge pea, which is fun. Chamacrista, chamacrista. Fasciculata. It's an annual native plant, so this grows for one year, reseeds, and dies. And grows again the next year, seeds, and then dies. So this will be a fun one. Um, in my Master Gardener project, we were trying to find these plants, and I never saw one. So I'm excited to start this. Um, but this is one that you just directly plant in the spring, so I'm probably still going to start it with the other easy to sow plants. Partridge pea is the larval host for the little yellow, sleepy orange, and orange sulfur butterflies. And it's also visited by other butterflies, birds, and bees. And just to, for, for fun, I will also be starting lemon balm seeds, because um, it makes a really good tea and it smells really good. Ho some hollyhock seeds that came from a friend and then valerian seeds. We'll see if that if that works. Valerian is another medicinal plant. It's one of my favorites. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. Comment down below if this was something you enjoyed. And follow me at Nature Will Nurture on Instagram. And if you're more into Facebook, I'll be starting a Nature Will Nurture Facebook page shortly. So if you're more into that realm, You'll be able, to be able to see when I post, when there are updates to the videos, if there are some new videos. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching and have a good one.